If you feel like you've been getting fewer chips in each bag, you might be right. This bag of Doritos used to be nine and three quarter ounces, but in February 2021, it became half an ounce lighter while the price stayed the same. This phenomenon is called shrinkflation. It's a strategy that companies use for a variety of reasons. Though PepsiCo says the change to Doritos was part of ongoing product evolution, during this period of high inflation, some companies are using shrinkflation to combat higher production costs so they don't have to raise prices. Here's how to spot shrinkflation and why, as consumers become savvier, companies have had to change how they approach it. Shrinkflation is when companies are trying to save money because they face higher costs, so they just put less food in the bag or smaller portions on the plate, but they still charge the same amount so that they make more money. Sometimes it's fewer sheets on their paper towel rolls. This new roll is significantly smaller. Other times, it means the quality of products and services is going down. That could be maybe replacing sugar with high fructose corn syrup. Maybe the car you're buying has fewer automatic upgrades in it, or the hotel you're staying at no longer offers fresh towels every day or free Wi-Fi. Shrinkflation in all its forms tends to be easier for companies to pass on to customers than raising prices. Because despite labels that show price by weight, research shows that most shoppers only look at the overall price. But consumers are getting savvier and companies are getting more creative. If there's a new packaging or a redesign of the packaging, then they can sneak in the different size without it being such an obvious comparison. Or if it's a limited edition of a certain flavor. That has been common with Oreos. They come out with limited edition Oreo flavors that are in a smaller package and actually cost more than the regular Oreos. And that is a tactic we're seeing a lot more now than just straight up shrinkflation. Mondelez, which owns Oreo, says consumers are often drawn to these offerings because they deliver unique, fun forms of value. You might also spot shrinkflation when a company releases an existing product in more convenient packaging. The companies really bill this as, hey, yes, we're charging you more, but we're giving you some added benefit. Part of the reason companies are changing how they approach shrinkflation is that they don't want customers to feel like they're getting less for their money. Companies really do not like the word shrinkflation. It has kind of a negative connotation. It became a sort of colloquial term because it's buzzy and it sounds fun and, and catchy, but it's not something that companies will admit to doing or how they'll characterize what they're doing. But what companies do talk about is price pack architecture, a term that includes shrinkflation, but more broadly describes changes to their product lines. And these changes can take many different forms. Companies constantly remove, replace, and add items to their product lines. Sometimes those items are smaller, other times they're larger. Changing the packaging or size can also lead to charging more per ounce, but not always. Here's the CEO of Campbell Soup talking to shareholders at its second quarter earnings call. We added innovation, whether it was mega uh, bites on goldfish or family size on goldfish, which was some of the new price pack architecture uh, that we were creating. A spokesperson from Campbell Soup says family size goldfish gives consumers an option for more product, not less. So why do companies make these types of changes? Sometimes it's to keep their prices competitive with other brands. Years ago, the Chobani yogurt group changed their size of yogurt containers from 6 ounces to 5.3 ounces, which is what the competitors' yogurts were. But that caused some backlash with you know consumers who noticed that their yogurt container, their yogurt cup was smaller. That gave the company more revenue without having to raise its prices. Chobani didn't respond to requests for comment. Another reason companies make changes to their products is to combat higher production costs. That's why Tillamook, a dairy cooperative in Oregon, downsized its 56-ounce ice cream containers to 48 ounces while keeping the price the same. Tillamook's CEO told the Washington Post in June 2021 that the company downsized its containers so it could make enough money to pay the farmers who own the company. Downsizing isn't easy to do. It requires changing the production line and package design, and it takes time for these changes to flow through the supply chain. They're only going to do it when their hands are tied, when they're pressed for profits, and when they think that the inflation is really going to last. Companies also have to work with retailers because they're the ones who set the final price at which items are sold. But the biggest concern for these companies is what consumers think of them. 
For example, in 2016, due to the rising cost of ingredients, Mondelez cut the weight of some Toblerone bars sold in the UK by widening the gaps between the chocolate peaks while maintaining the price. Angry fans took to social media, and in 2018, the company discontinued that version of the chocolate bar. These consumer companies, it's really important to them that they don't disappoint their consumers. They want people to be loyal to them. As companies mold their strategies to fit consumers' needs and opinions, consultants and analysts say that people should also expect these changes to last. Sizes do not go back. Prices do not go back. Once a company has trained the consumer on what to expect, when their costs go down, they're not going to go back and change that. And though shrinkflation typically starts with bigger brands, experts say consumers should expect smaller brands to follow suit soon after. <laughs> 